This is the BBC Light Programme. We present Tony Hancock, Bill Kerr, Sidney James, Andre Melly, and Kenneth Williams in Hancock's Offer. Well, it's all over. The election, that is. Another government has been installed at Westminster, the country has reverted back to sanity, and defeated members of Parliament will now have to find somewhere else to sleep. The interest of millions has been which candidates would be elected, and no one was more interested in this than Mr Anthony Hancock. And my friends, in asking you to return me to the House as your Member of Parliament, I make no rash promises. I offer you nothing I cannot fulfil. All I do say is, what other bloke is offering a family allowance of 63 bob for every child up to the age of 24? And old age pensions for everybody over the age of 26? <laughs> for those of you who are unfortunate enough to be 25, I can only offer you work with long periods of unemployment. <laughs> My friends, as I stand here on the rostrum tonight... Ah, uh, Tom, get down off the sideboard. What do you think you're doing? I'm practising me election speech. Ah, oh, you're not still going through with that stupid idea of standing for Parliament. I don't think it's a stupid idea to want to serve one's country. Oh, now, please, Tom, and take that cigar out of your mouth. You're not fooling anyone. Member of Parliament, forget about it, Tom. You're wasting your time. It's too late to forget about it. I've been nominated, proposed, seconded, accepted, and me £150 deposit has gone in. A hundred and... Where did you get 150 pounds? Me patron put it up. Well, the guy who's willing to waste 150 pounds on you must be crazy. Who is it? You. See? <laughs> me! <laughs> you. I haven't given you a penny. Well, you didn't exactly give it to me. But I haven't got 150 pounds. Not in cash. But there were those empty beer bottles in your room. <laughs> and I put the other four and tuppence to it myself. <laughs> now, listen. I've taken a lot from you. Don't you shout at me. You may be addressing the future Prime Minister of England, Mush. Ha, <laughs> you Prime Minister. Certainly. I've already picked me shadow cabinet. Got all the lads in. Chancellor of the Exchequer, Bud Flanagan. <laughs> Minister of Education, Jimmy Wheeler. Minister of Pensions, Wilfred Pickles. <laughs> and what about me? Say, how about Governor General of Australia? No, thank you. We've already lost India. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the whole idea's screwed. Who's going to vote for you? Jody, are you there? In here, Andre. Oh, there you are. I've just collected your election pamphlets from the printers. Four sets, as ordered. Vote for Hancock, your Labour candidate. Vote for Hancock, your Conservative candidate. <laughs> vote for Hancock, your Liberal candidate. And vote for Hancock, your other party's candidate. <laughs> You're not taking any chances, are you? <laughs> How are you going to work this one? Simple. Knock on the doors, find out their politics, then give them the appropriate pamphlet. <laughs> if my calculations are correct, out of a total poll of 56,000, I should get 55,999, and I'm still working on the other one. Who was it? Me opponent. <laughs> uh, this all sounds just a little bit dishonest. Whose idea was it? Me election agent. And who's that? Sid James. <laughs> oh, man and guest. Fancy trust in him. Are you sure he's not working for your opponent as well? Don't be ridiculous. Of course he's... Come to think of it. I've seen five different posters up for him, too. <laughs> no, no, it's a coincidence. Sid promised me he's full support. Well, what does he stand to gain by it? Nothing. Except if I get in, I've got a legalised noblin at the dog tracks. <laughs> I think you're making a big mistake, Tap. Leave politics to the politicians. It's not for the ordinary man in the street. Oh, that's not true, Bill. In a democracy, everybody has the right to stand for Parliament. Of course they have. In France, my family are only ordinary people, and they've all taken up politics. Well, that's OK. Out there, everybody gets a turn at being Prime Minister, but <laughs> over here, it's different. Well, I think Donny will do very well in the election. With his experience at the stage, he'll enjoy speaking to large audiences. Of course he will. He's never had one before. <laughs> you hecklers. Yeah. All right, all right. We won't go into my histrionic history. I'm standing for Parliament, so that's that. Can I count on your help or not? Oh, I suppose so. What do you want me to do? You can be chairman at me meetings. Sid's got some good speakers supporting me. Sunday, he's got Anthony Eden coming down. Monday, he's got Anirin Bevin coming down. And on Tuesday, he's got Clement Davis coming down. Should be a very interesting meeting on Wednesday. Why? They're all coming down. <laughs> well, I suppose we'd better get down to the committee rooms and see if Mr. James is organising things properly. Right. Where's me rosette? Labour, Conservative or Liberal? All of them. The moths have been in me suit again. <laughs> Th 
This is your election headquarters. Yes, not bad, eh? It's a pub. Is it? I must have a few words with Sidney about this. He didn't tell me it was a pub. Well, what did you think the bottles inside were? He said they contained ballot slips from floating voters. <laughs> It must be out of his mind to choose a place like this. Oh, I don't know. He saved some money on the posters. He's just pasted Hancock on the ones already there. See? My goodness, my Hancock. <laughs> what we want is Hancock. Hancock is good for you. <laughs> Hancock for strength. Down with Hancock, then you'll feel better. No, that one doesn't work. <laughs> Mr. James has done very well with the publicity. Look, Tony's name is everywhere. They've even pasted his photograph over the pub sign. Yeah, not the best place to put it. Why not? This is the cock and bull. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's go in. Evening, Fred. Evening, Mr. Hancock. Sit here. In the back room. Thanks. Excuse me, coming through. Excuse me. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Charlie, your throw, five double top wanted. Yeah! <laughs> it's your fault for walking in front of the board. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it's only gone in up to the flight. <laughs> don't forget all. Hancock for the house. Come on, Tom, through here. Hello, Tony boy. Thanks. Hello, Hello Sidney. I'm on the hooter, fixing things up with me chief assistant canvasser. Hello, Slasher. Now, listen, Hancock's opponent is holding a meeting down the park tonight. I want you and the boys to do a bit of heckling. You better go down there by bike. The chains might come in handy. Oh, and uh, by the way, on election day, you'll be driving the cars, taking the people down the polling booths. Now, don't forget, find out who they're voting for first. If it's the other bloke, slam the door on her writing hand. Yeah, keep in touch. See ya. How are things going, Sid? Oh, great, great. I've got the campaign well underway. I've been along to all the other blokes' meetings, and I can safely say things are going in the right direction. Yes? Yep. Bottles, cabbages, eggs, anything we can lay our hands on. What do you think our chances are? Oh, marvellous. I've got everything organised. Tonight, we're holding a mass meeting of your supporters in Trafalgar Square. Really? Yep, one on each lion. <laughs> Only four, that's not very good, is it? No, which is why I've had to take certain precautions. Such as? I've spread a few rumours about the other geezer, little things like uh, he's a drug addict, drinks like a fish, deserted during the war, left his wife and three kids running around with a blonde. You know, the usual election stuff. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm very disgusted with the whole thing. I had no idea it would be like this. They stoop to anything. They even attack one's friends. You should hear what the other side have been saying about Bill. Much worse than what you said about them. Frankly, I'm very worried about it. Why? It's all true. <laughs> I think the old thing is very unethical. Look, you want to get in, don't you? Only by honest means. Oh, isn't it great? 1,400 candidates and I've got to pick the Charlie. <laughs> I assure you, everything I'm doing is normal election practice. Now, here are your instructions. When you're addressing a meeting and someone asks you an awkward question, ask him to stand up. Why? We don't want the brick to hit anybody else, do we? <laughs> now... Here's a map of the district. We've shaded in the areas for and against you. That big red patch there, you haven't got a chance. That big blue lot, you haven't got a chance. That yellow lump there, you haven't got a chance. That big green lot, you haven't got a chance. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, where's me strength lie? Hang on, it's here somewhere. Oh, where's me magnifying glass? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See that little white dot down there in the corner? Oh, yes, yes. You're all right there. <laughs> I'm not surprised, that's my house. <laughs> What about the area here? You haven't shaded it in. No, well, we didn't think it worthwhile canvassing that bit. Why not? It's the cemetery. <laughs> well, there doesn't seem much point in carrying on, does there? Of course there is. There's three days to go yet. Yeah, a lot can happen. The battle is never lost until the votes are counted. And if it's any consolation to you, my Uncle Barney says... This is only his personal opinion, Mark, you. But he reckons you'll win by at least 60,000 votes. What does he know about it? He counts them. <laughs> but just in case anything goes wrong, we've got to carry on the campaign. Oh, yes. You must go around and speak to the people personally. Address public meetings. Knock at their doors. Talk to them. Show them what a good man you are and what you're going to do for them when you're elected. By heavens, you're right. Come, let's go meet the people. Excuse me, thank you. Coming through. Your throw, Charlie. Yeah! <laughs> oh, well, we'll just have to finish the game with one dart. <laughs> How 
And my friends, by casting a vote for me, you will be instrumental in bringing back to this island home the greatness that has been our heritage for hundreds of years. You will restore Great Britain to its former glories and the rightful place as leader of the nations of the world. You, the people who are proud to call yourself British, will once more hold your heads up high and the nations will look towards us and say, there lies our hope, our strength, our salvation. You, you, and you can play your part. Yes, in years to come, we will tell your grandchildren you helped, you aided, and you built the rock on which their security has entered. Let us march together, united in the common cause. March down the broad avenue towards the vistas of our glorious future spread out before us. Sons of Britain, the dawn is breaking. The day of glory dawns at last. The field of battle lies before us. On, on, and every one of you, forward to victory! Never mind, Tup. Perhaps someone will turn up at the next meeting. <laughs> Come on, Tony. Let's try some door-to-door -door canvassing. <laughs> Yes. Oh, good evening. Well... I'm Anthony Hancock, your local candidate. May I just outline no. the poli... No, if I could just have no. a little... But you've got the picture stuck up all over the front of your house. Yeah, it keeps the birds off my window boxes. <laughs> no, please. Look, just let me outline my policy. I'll run away. I'm not interested. Uh, oh, uh, please, monsieur. Uh, don't close the door. Oh, I... Uh, <clears throat> good evening, miss. I didn't notice you there. You look such an intelligent, understanding man. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Step inside and we'll have a little talk about it and a drink. Oh, thank you very much. Delighted. Open the door. Let me in. <laughs> She's not the candidate I am. Let me in. I can see you, Andre. Come out. Hey, Tup, what's all the noise about? Oh, well, goodbye, monsieur. I do hope I've persuaded you to vote for Mr. Hancock. Oh, yes, miss. Oh, yes. Roll on the next election, I say. <laughs> Andre, what did you do? What went on in there? No, what does it matter, Tony, if he's going to vote for us? It's disgusting. I have no desire to get votes that way. It undermines the whole structure of the British electoral system. I am very ashamed of you. Now, well, come on, let's try next door. Good evening. Oh, cool! <laughs> I am Anthony Hancock, your local candidate. Can I count on your vote? No, I don't think so. I'm very sorry. Andre, I'll go and have a cup of tea. You've got ten minutes. <laughs> It's about time she came out of that house. Give it? her a chance. Well, she's been in there three hours. Perhaps she's having trouble persuading him. Yeah, but three hours. I'd be willing to change my nationality after three minutes. Uh, goodbye, monsieur. I'm sorry if I've taken up too much of your time. Oh, not at all. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Pleasure. Do come again. Cool. Ah, my dear sir. <laughs> oh, for now, I just got to wipe this lipstick off. <clears throat> you were saying? I trust this young lady has persuaded you to give me your vote? Well, she did, yes. I very nearly came out to help you as well. <laughs> but then I suddenly remembered. I couldn't. Why not? I'm the other candidate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good day. That's it. No more knocking on doors. I'm finished. We're going home. Oh, but I've plenty of lipstick left. Not on your face, you haven't. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't have that sort of thing going on over here. If that's the way French elections are carried out, no wonder they have so many. But it isn't the British way. We'll have to think of some other method of getting votes. I've got it. Go round kissing all the babies. That'll get the votes. Don't be silly. They're too young to vote. No, they're mothers. A woman's always a sucker for someone who takes an interest in her kids. Kiss the babies and the women will vote for you. It never misses. Come on, let's give it a whirl. How is he, Doctor? No, oh, it's nothing to worry about. It's just a slight case of the measles. Uh, plenty of rest and he'll be all right in a week or two. Uh, well, goodbye, Mr. Hancock. Goodbye, Doctor. Now look after yourself. Uh, keep away from children, won't you? As long as I live. Measles. Whose bright idea was it to go round kissing all the babies? Oh, I'm sorry, Tub. Don't forget the one with the freckles, he says. <laughs> Ugh. 
What about the election? Stuck here in bed. Well, there's nothing more you could do anyway. The vote will finish ten minutes ago. They've probably started counting them by now. Well, try and get some sleep, Tony. We'll get the result in the morning. If I get half as many votes as I've got spots, I'll sweep the country. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We'll know whether you got in soon enough. You just get some rest. Good night, Tony. Good night. Good night, Cap. Ah, oh, measles. I hope he gets them. I breathed on him as hard as I could. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I'll get in. Sleep. Must get some sleep. Yeah. Oh, counting votes. One, two, three, four. Counting votes. Five, six, seven. Must get in. Must get elected. Right, Honourable Hancock. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. We interrupt this programme to bring you the results from Ebba Vale. The Right Honourable Anaran Bevan, Labour, 26,058. J.E. Bowen, Conservative, 6,822. Labour elected. No change. That was Ebba Vale. And here is the result from Shepherd's Bush Green North. Anthony A. St. John Hancock, 83,349. Anthony Eden, 2. <laughs> Clement Ackley, 2. <laughs> Hancock elected. Both the Conservative and Labour candidates forfeit their deposits. That was Shepherd's Bush Green North. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. My friends of Shepherd's Bush, I thank you for the confidence you have bestowed upon me in sending me to Westminster. I will pledge myself to do my utmost to justify the faith you have placed in me. And I'd just like to express my appreciation to me two opponents, Clem and Tone, for the sporty way in which they've taken their bashing. Bad luck, lads. Here's a little consolation prize. New hat and a pipe. Good health. Oh, elected. Been elected. I'll show them. I'll shake the country up a bit. You make a day for myself. Won't know what's it. The new British Parliament met today in the House of Commons for the first time, and a fantastic position has arisen. With the Labour and Conservative parties having an equal number of seats, the casting vote lies with the new independent member for Shepherd's Bush Green North, Mr. Anthony Hancock. Neither party can form a government without his support. MPs from both parties are desperately trying to persuade him to vote with them on all major issues. Thank you, old chap. I don't think we'll have any difficulty in getting him on our side. Oh, do me a favour. He wouldn't touch your lot. Too lardy da Out of touch with the working man. That's your trouble. Oh, there you go again, stirring up class warfare. We have men of integrity on our benches. Oh, cool, blimey. I should coke. Oh, integrate, integrate, integrate. You ain't got none of whatever it is. <laughs> Take it from me, Cook. Hancock will come in with us. Oh, he'll undoubtedly form a merger with our group. Oh, conkers. Me and my class have just about had enough of you and your class. And my class has about enough of your class. Well, I'm going to report you to my party leader. And so am I. Yeah. Uh, Winnie! I Winnie! Painting Mr. Hancock. Painting Mr. Hancock, I say, excuse me. Yeah? Uh, have you seen Mr. Hancock anywhere? Oh, yeah, he's over there talking to the speaker. Of course, this isn't the first time I've been in the Commons, you know. Yeah. Well, you can tell from the nonchalant way I wipe my feet on the wool sack. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I've never been a member before. I was in the public gallery, me. A coach party was down from Brum. We were waiting for the mob to come in, the MPs. Right. Anyway, in they come, Baldwin, Chamberlain, Lloyd George, because I'm going back a bit now. <laughs> then our lad comes in, Percy Trubshaw. <laughs> so we all got up and cheered, he waved, and we were thrown out. You know how it is when a few of the lads get together. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we came back, and by mistake, they put us in the government back benches. <laughs> well, there were better seats than we had, so we didn't let on. Well, you do it at the pictures, don't you? <laughs> well, there was a very important debate going on, affecting the future of the whole world. Well, anyway, this debate got dead boring. No interest at all. The air minister was throwing paper darts about. The prime minister was livid. They went further than his. <laughs> so anyway, we got fed up with this. And we said, who wants to go home? 
So we all put our hands up, and do you know what happened? Mm -hmm. The bill was passed. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, only a backbencher. Uh, must get on. Great career ahead of me. Uh, must get on. Fame. Fame. This is the BBC Home Service. Here is a newsflash. The fantastic state of affairs at Westminster continues. With neither side having majority, there is still no government. The House is at a complete standstill. No bills can be passed, no decisions made, no action taken on any question, home, economic or foreign policy, until Mr Anthony Hancock, independent member for Shepherd's Bush Green North, decides which party to support. At this moment, he is still sitting in the House, quite unconcerned, as the two parties make a dramatic bid for power. I vote that us Conservatives try and form a government. Are you with us, Mr Hancock? No. There, you see, he prefers we socialists, don't you, Mr Hancock? No. Oh, come off it, Hancock. The country's at a standstill. You've got to join one of us. Not going to. Oh, the man's impossible. Here. Yeah? Yes. What's your three-letter word? Domestic animal, beginning with a C, ending with T. Cat. How do you spell it? C A T. Ooh, ta. Now will you join us? No. Oh, well, we'll just have to carry on without you. All right, it's your deal, Rab. Juice's wild spots are on top. Come on, boys. Here is another news flash. The country still being without a government, it has been decided to take drastic steps. As Labour and Conservatives are powerless, having 315 seats each, Mr. Anthony Hancock, the Independent, becomes the strongest party in the House. Therefore, the only solution possible has been taken. This afternoon, Mr. Hancock was called to Buckingham Palace, knighted, and asked to form a government. And so, at this very moment, the new Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Sir Anthony Hancock MP, is addressing a packed house. All right, lads, quiet, quiet, please. Places. Now, there's going to be a few changes round here. First of all, the country's just about fed up with the way you lot keep squabbling with each other. Look at the way the election was conducted. I think a few apologies are called for. You lot, over there, apologise for what you said. All together now. One, two, three. We are sorry for the I should think so. And you other lot, you needn't smirk. Come on, on your feet. Apologise for what you said. You know the one. Apologise all together now. One, two, three. We are sorry for the cost of living scare. Well, that's better. Now, in future, we'll have no arguments. I'm in charge. You've got to be more friendly. None of this one lot on one side of the house and one lot on the other. I'm going to mix you up a bit. <laughs> so you can get to know each other, right? Bessie, over there with Lady Tweedsmuir. <laughs> what? I don't care if you are wearing the same hats. Get over there. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Now, now, girls, put your hat pins back. No fencing in here, if you please. Now, where's Butler? Come on, Rab. Over here, please, next to Nye Bevin. Don't be frightened, he won't bite you. <laughs> oh, blimey, he has. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see where we are. Oi, oi, Irby Morrison. Brush that quiff down, the bloke behind you can't see. <laughs> now, as I was saying, I say, you, sir, please don't flick your cigar out right on the carpet, there's a good chap. <laughs> now then, the day's business. I just like. Booth, stop combing your hair, you're not on television now. <laughs> First of all, question time. Any lady or gent like to ask any questions about me policy? What about income tax? Abolish it. What about purchase tax? Take it off. What about entertainment tax? Do away with it. May I ask where the money's coming from then? Certainly. As from next week, we're going to hold a few dances here. Anyone play any instruments? Mr Prime Minister, am I to understand you intend to turn the House of Commons into a dance hall? Certainly. Think of the dollar trade. What an attraction. Westminster Palais, non-stop dancing from Hot Lips, Horsburgh and her all-girl band. And on the revolving bandstand, Connie Ziliartis and his Hungarian gypsies. <laughs> hello, hello. Mutiny. Any more of that? And I'll alter your divisions round again so none of you get in. You've had it too easy, you lot. Thousand a year, turning up when you feel like it. In future, you're going to get paid by the hour. And no turning up late. You've got no excuse. There's a dirty great clock outside. <laughs> and no going to sleep when you get here. That lot at the back. Come on. 
Wake up. Get those eyes open. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Tony. Wake up. Uh, hey, Tub. Wake up. Uh, 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 tub, wake up. Prime Minister Tub, if you don't mind. Get me bike pumped up. I'm due at the house. Tub, Tub, you've been dreaming. Say, uh, how are your measles? <laughs> oh, not so good. That face looks like an explosion in a spotted dick factory. <laughs> oh, I had a wonderful dream. I dreamt I'd been elected to Parliament and they made me Prime Minister. Well, you may be yet. Mr James has just come back with the election result. Ah, oh, good morning, all. Did I get in? Just a minute. Here's the result. Your opponent polled 37,287. And me? No. We demand a recount. What went wrong, Mr. James? Oh, there was a swing to the right. Yes, but no votes. Oh, well, yes, I can explain that. All your votes were declared null and void. Why? He said Wardy and Fred's fault. I told him to stay up all night putting crosses next to your name on 40,000 forged ballot forms. So? So, last week he learned to write. Thought he'd show off a bit. He didn't put crosses down at all. What did he do? He signed his name instead. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. I didn't get in after all. All me hopes and me dreams finished. Oh, never mind, Tony. You can try again in 1960. Yes, I suppose so. Well, if you all wouldn't mind leaving me alone now, I'm going back to sleep. Why? You tired? No, but I've promised Bessie Braddock the next Mambo. Good night! <laughs> been listening to Hancock's Half Hour, featuring Kevin McNally, Kevin Eldon, Robin Sebastian, Simon Greenall, and Susie Kane. Incidental music was composed by Wally Stott and recorded by the BBC Concert Orchestra, conducted by Levin Perikian. The script was written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, and the programme, which was recorded, was produced by Neil Pearson and Hayley Sterling. It was a BBC Studios production.